Hey everybody, welcome to a new class, a new class we're starting called Foundations in Faith. Um, this is our first session, it's something we've been thinking about for quite a long time, I'm very excited to be able to actually get this project started. And uh, today, the first session, kind of an introductory session telling you what we're going to be doing, why we're going to be doing it, where this idea really comes from, where it stems from. Um, so to get to that, this really comes from a thought of uh, confirmation. And our confirmation classes here that we teach to the 7th and 8th graders, uh, they are required for 7th and 8th graders to be confirmed here at St. Paul. But we do invite the parents of those 7th and 8th graders that if they want to sit in the class, if they want to be present for those classes, uh, they're more than welcome to sit in and learn and, and take notes and whatever they feel the need to do. And some of the feedback that we've gotten from the parents of those classes is that it, it's been incredibly helpful for their faith as well not only for knowing what their students are going through and knowing what their students are talking about in class, but also just personally, what do we believe to kind of revisit those topics and revisit those foundations of what it means to be not only Christian, but Lutheran as well. And so out of that feedback, we were kind of throwing around this idea of putting together uh, kind of an introductory, okay, you're Lutheran, what does that mean? What are kind of the foundations, the basics of Lutheranism? What does that look like for us here at St. Paul? So that's kind of the idea of where this class comes from, uh, so that we're going to be journeying through. I don't know how many sessions we're going to have. Uh, we're going to explore that and see with different time limits and different materials and how to walk through that. But in order to accomplish this goal of laying those foundations of kind of looking at what the basis of our faith is, we have three main books that we're going to be working through. First and foremost, scriptures. This is the basis for everything we do. This is the basis for everything we preach, teach, confess, believe. All of everything you're going to hear is based off of Scripture. And even as we get into the other resources that we're going to be looking at from Martin Luther, from Melanchthon, uh, someone that works very closely with Luther, all of their writings, all of their teachings are based off Scripture as well. So we're going to be spending a good time in Scripture. Uh, we're also going to be looking at two other books, one you're familiar with most likely, uh, one you probably aren't as familiar with. The first is going to be the Small Catechism. Uh, this is something that Luther put together, I'll talk about it in just a minute here, uh, but something that we teach in the confirmation classes, something that's used in Lutheran churches across the nation uh, to kind of unite our teaching, our doctrine, and what we believe. The second document we're going to be looking at is uh, from this huge book called the Book of Concord, and this is a collection of documents. The small catechism is in here, the large catechism is in here as well, we'll be looking at that. Uh, but what I want to pull from here is called the Augsburg Confession. And that kind of gives us a really good basis, a starting point, but also a very systematic way to walk through our beliefs as Lutherans. Um, so we're going to be following along with the different articles of the Augsburg Confession. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about these resources, um, specifically the Catechism and the Augsburg Confession, give you a little bit of an introduction to uh, why we're going to be using those as opposed to maybe different books that you've heard of or different ways that you've seen a uh, course like this kind of treated. And uh, next week, we'll dive into some of the material about God. So the Augsburg Confession is what I want to talk about first. Uh, this was a document that was originally put together by Luther and Melanchthon. Melanchthon was a guy that worked very closely with Luther during the Reformation era. And as Luther became under those imperial um, being cast out and not being allowed to travel and all that, Melanchthon was actually the guy that went on his behalf in a lot of cases. Melanchthon himself was a great theologian as well. Uh, he spent a lot of time talking with Luther, thinking about these things with Luther, and also fighting uh, on the side of Luther against the Roman Catholics and the different uh, writings that they had back and forth, which is really where the Augsburg Confession comes from. Now, it was originally published in 1531, but it didn't start out as a confession of faith, uh, meaning it didn't systematically walk through and lay out what we believe as Christians and as Lutherans. Originally, it was an apology which means a defense. It was a defense of Lutheranism over and against Catholicism. Um, and so the because of political unrest at the time, shortly after the, Re the Reformation, the emperor of the time, Charles V, he wanted to consolidate German power, which included trying to end the religious strife that the Reformation had caused, not only between Catholics and Lutherans, but really all of the Reformation branches uh, that came out of the Reformation. This includes things like uh, Zwingli and his teachings, the Zwinglian Church, as well as Anabaptist groups uh, such as that. And so for this reason of trying to consolidate his power, really unite Germany and the territories that he controlled in that time, uh, the religious groups were all called to a meeting, which is called a diet. Uh, you might have heard of the Diet of Worms that uh, Luther was part of, uh, that kind of stemmed a lot of, a lot of the Reformation as well. They were called to a diet to explain their stance on doctrinal issues 
uh, against the Roman Catholic Church and really how the Reformation came about, why Luther felt it was important to have the writings that he did and to really kind of just have a sit down and talk these things through. So in preparation for this meeting, Luther and Melanchthon worked together to write papers uh, which explained what led up to the Reformation, including things like talking about the 95 Theses, uh, talking about the different viewpoints they had that differed from the Catholic Church. But it was, again, a defense of the Lutheran faith. It wasn't really an explanation of, here's what we believe in all these points. Rather, it was saying, you believe this, this is what we believe against that. And that's how this document originally started out. But because Luther had been declared an outlaw in 1521, uh, right after the Reformation there, uh, would most likely have been arrested if he had attended that diet, if he attended that meeting, Melanchthon traveled to the location that it would be held uh, without Luther. Now, the location that this meeting was held was the city of Augsburg, which is where we get the name for the Augsburg Confession. So when he got to Augsburg, Melanchthon encountered one of the brightest minds in Catholic theology of the time, a guy by the name of John Eck. Not only was he theologically intelligent, spent a lot of time thinking about these things within the Catholic Church, um, but politically he was pretty savvy as well. And so Eck made a move that really forced Melanchthon to change his way of thinking, his way of presenting the paper. Um, Eck wrote a paper that grouped Lutherans in with all the other branches of the Reformation. So he, uh, Melanchthon wouldn't have been speaking just on behalf of Lutherans in writing against Eck's paper. He would actually have been speaking on behalf of Anabaptists and Zwinglians and all these other groups as well. And uh, Lutherans and Anabaptists and Zwinglians and these other groups, we don't agree on all points either. And so it wasn't fair to lump us all in together. That's what Eck was going for, to try and kind of make it an all or nothing ordeal. And so Melanchthon had to change his tactics to really differentiate Lutheranism from these other Reformation groups. And so uh, he took the paper that, that Luther and Melanchthon had originally written, and he kind of revised it, he updated it, he added a lot to it, and turned it from a uh, defense, an apology of Lutheranism, to a confession, to explaining what Lutherans believe. A lot of times as we walk through, I'll try and point out a few, uh, where he says actually over and against, differing from the Anabaptists, differing from the Zwinglians, this is what Lutherans believe. So he's trying, trying to drive that hard and clear line, saying this is what Lutheranism is. This is what we believe foundationally and fundamentally. Um, so this document that Melanchthon put together after receiving X papers, what we now know as the Augsburg Confession, uh, we use that to study, to learn today. We walk through this a couple times within seminary. We have a full year of confession courses that walk through this and other documents from the era. Um, so very dense theological material at times. Uh, especially when we get into the apology of the Augsburg Confession, um, but very, very solid foundational material for what Lutheranism is. So the Augsburg Confession uh, is organized differently than the Catechism that you're very familiar with, but it follows the same doctrinal foundation, uh, the same foundation of seated in Jesus Christ in his work for us and how that affects all the other doctrines of the church. So that's really our starting point is Jesus Christ, um, as we see, especially within Luther's teachings. But the Augsburg Confession tries to look at it a little more systematically. Um, and so the two, the Augsburg Confession and the Catechism, can really be used in support of each other, but we do have to respect their differences as well as we walk through them. The Confession is organized into 28 different articles uh, that briefly state the Lutheran belief on a range of topics, from God, from original sin, uh, Jesus, to things like what foods we can eat, how do we take vows, should we take vows, what's the extent of the church's power, um, especially at that time in the political unrest that was going on in the area, uh, the church's power was, it was quite a big topic of discussion. So we'll be walking through some of these in the scope of this class. Uh, many of them really aren't pertinent to our time, so we won't be spending too much time on those topics, but we'll, we'll still briefly talk about them and kind of just say what Lutheran believed uh, what Luther believed back then, how we can maybe apply that to our times today. So in addition to the Augsburg Confession, Melanchthon also penned the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. Uh, again, an apology means a defense, so he's defending what he put forward in the Augsburg Confession. Opponents of the Lutherans wrote a paper against the Augsburg Confession shortly after it was presented, um, and Melanchthon then wrote a response to those papers. 
The Apology dives a lot deeper into some of the main differences between Lutheran and Catholic theology, such as original sin, the Lord's Supper, a justification, works righteousness, things about uh, things of that nature. So we will be spending a good amount of time, mostly because there's a lot of material there, um, a lot of material that Melanchthon wrote that Luther uh, agreed with, but also because these are the foundational issues of what Christianity, what Lutheranism is. How do we address original sin? What does that look like? through Jesus Christ and through the cross. What is justification? What does it mean to be made right with God? How does that even happen? So we're going to be spending a lot of time in those topics. So many of you, uh, as we move into our second material here, will be familiar with the Catechism. As I said, you probably walked through it in confirmation courses, whether that was a middle schooler or as an adult if you came to Lutheranism later in life. Um, this, as we know it, was written by Luther, but a Catechism of a type was actually around long before Luther's time. The origins of the Catechism stretch way back to the earliest times of the Church, even with hints of it in Scripture. Uh, the Greek word from which we get Catechism is katecheo, was used by Paul in Galatians 6.6, 6, actually. And Galatians 6.6 6 says, Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the Word should share all good things with their instructor. So that word instruction, or that connotation instruction of the, in the Word, is really where we get that word katecheo, um, to denote the Christian instruction. St. Augustine then in the Middle Ages was the first we know of to use the noun catechismus to denote basic Christian instruction, kind of a foundation of Christian beliefs. Um, and was it, this was a group of subjects that was taught to young Christians before they were baptized. Catechism classes at that time were usually about three years long. You had to walk through catechism before you were baptized even into the church. Um, and so catechismus was that process, that, that three-year process of instruction before baptism. In the Middle Ages, then, the church often narrowed this instruction to three main topics, being the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, as we still see within our catechism as well. After the Reformation, there was a call for a Lutheran catechism um, that could be distributed to families for basic instruction, also distributed to pastors, so that they would have a basis and kind of a common way of talking about these things as well. Uh, because of political reasons, again, going on at the time and a struggle with his health, Luther took this project on pretty early in the 1520s, uh, but he wasn't able to complete it, actually, until about 1530 or 1531. We're not 100% sure of that timing. Um, but after it was completed, it was very quickly distributed, and it's organized in, in kind of the same way that it was in the Middle Ages in a good Lutheran fashion, uh, moving from law to gospel. We'll be talking about those two terms quite a bit as well. Uh, but from the Ten Commandments, and then into the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer, Lutheran spends a good time talking about the sacraments as well, about baptism, the Lord's Supper, and confession and absolution. So that covers the small catechism, um, but what you may or may not know is there's actually a partner to that being the large catechism. And this is something Luther worked on as well, um, not really as a partner to the catechism. It wasn't intended to be something that was distributed with the catechism. Uh, rather, it's based off a series of sermons that Luther composed during his time of preaching on the catechism while he was filling in for another pastor. So another pastor was off uh, taking care of political things in another city. Luther came into his parish and preached through the catechism that they had at the time. So the large catechism is kind of a collection of the notes that he used, a collection of the sermons that he gave as he went back and also edited those sermons and put them down into writing, compiled them into a book, and, and organized in the same way of uh, Ten Commandments, Lord's Prayer, Apostles' Creed, Baptism, Lord's Supper, but it goes much deeper into the theology and the teaching behind those things. It first appeared, the large catechism, in uh, 1529 was when it was finish, finished, but Luther continued revising and adding to it um, until 1538 is the last revision that we know of that Luther made himself. Um, so within these sermons, he goes into greater detail on the topics of the small catechism, but again follows that same structure. So we'll be diving into the large catechism uh, quite a bit as well as we walk through these different topics. So that's kind of the scope of the class of what we'll be walking through, um, covering all those topics, again, from God to Jesus to original sin, justification, things of that nature. These are the main resources we're going to be working with and using. I would love to have some engagement with you as you're watching this. So if you have questions about different topics, if you'd like me to cover something in a video that maybe you haven't heard here, uh, shoot me an email, pastorandrew at stpaulboca.com. 
I'd love to be able to talk with you, engage in you that way. Uh, you can also comment down here on the YouTube video, uh, leave questions, leave thoughts, leave concerns, whatever it might be. I'd love to have that engagement and uh, keep your eyes open for the next video. Our first session is going to be talking about God. God and leading into then original sin. What happened in creation? What did God do in creation? Who is God? What is God's nature? Um, things like that. So we'll be walking through that in the coming week. God bless. Hope you're all doing well.